Hello, and welcome to another episode of Not Actually Working on the Protogen Head. Uh, I was on vacation slash a work trip for a week and a half a couple of weeks ago, so I didn't really have any time to do anything there. I haven't had time since I got back because I've just been catching up on stuff. So I really haven't had time to work on this project for about a month and a half at this point. And um, I want to get back into that probably next weekend. This weekend, I wanted, I was catching up on the last of, some, of things that I was doing. And as you may recall, in the last video, I mentioned that I had gotten an ATEM Mini Pro ISO to use to try to produce these videos live. Um, it's a great device. I loved it so much that um, I went ahead and splurged and got the bigger version, which I really shouldn't have, but it was on sale at least. So maybe if I can flip this on eBay or something, I can get some of the money back. But if I would have waited another month or so for this to be on sale before buying one in the first place, that would have been ideal. But I didn't because I didn't know it was going to be on sale. And I also used the smaller one at the work event to kind of record what we were doing for um, just record keeping purposes. The audio didn't come out very good because I didn't have good microphones, but it still worked. So yeah, I've got the big boy back here now. I'll zoom in on that in a little bit. Well, nothing has really changed with the head since the last update. Uh, I was setting it up to just use here as a prop just now, and it didn't want to work right off of battery power. Like the, sc the external screens weren't working right, and I'm not sure what was going on there. Put everything up on my uh, my bench power supply and it's working fine, so maybe something's wrong with the battery. I don't know, I'll deal with it later. I did move the um, bench power supply from this side of the bench to that side of the bench to make some room for a camera up here, looking down on this part of the bench from this angle, just in case I ever need that. But I do have three cameras now, as you may have noticed, which is why I wanted to make room for that, so I have an over-the-shoulder camera. I have a camera from this angle on the bench. This is very similar to what I used to have over here. Uh, as you can see from this angle, like the other camera used to be sitting here, but it's not now. It's actually back a little bit. You can see the tripod over here. I just needed to have more room for this guy and a little supplementary controller. And I have the camera that used to be on the left looking over here. And the nice thing about using this bigger one is it has eight inputs instead of four. It has more keyers so it can do chroma keying, like it can overlay stuff better. Yeah, it's just got more of everything. And some of the awesome stuff that I can do now that it has more inputs is I can have, uh, you know, one camera, two camera, three camera, four camera, or computer in this case. But I can also have another input to uh, just have a computer running VC face and pipe that in live. So that's what I'm doing right now. You can kind of see over here is my Windows laptop that's running VC face and it's piping it out. Uh, to the switcher so I can chroma key it and put it on there. I can also control where it is, put it over there. I can even make it bigger, send it back smaller. So I've got control of that on the stream deck over here. And I even, <laughs> this is going to look really bad, so I'm not going to leave it up for long, but I can even loop back the output of what I see into the device to record it with everything else. Cause see how it says ISO record. So it's recording every input individually. So I can get that to be recorded. And I don't know what I'm going to do with it, but I figured it'd be cool. And I still have two inputs that aren't even anything, anything at all. So yeah, uh, I want to get back into doing some stuff here. I need to, physically finish this head. I just need to do that. I need to work on moving these graphics and resizing them. That's easy. I might end up doing that next weekend. Physically finishing the head, I just need to actually do it. 
I have like all the stuff I ha need for it. I just need to make the time and have the energy to do it. Three day weekend next weekend might have some time to do that. Maybe I'll force myself to do it on Monday. I don't know. I do kind of want to move this year, which would cause problems with stuff. But again, don't know if it's going to happen. Uh, so that could cause me to not get this done. But I absolutely want this done by BLFC in five months now. But in the meantime, yeah, this has a lot of cool stuff. Uh, I guess I can reorder, reorganize these cameras a little bit to kind of do it. Oh, right. This isn't the only new toy I got. I completely forgot to mention this. I also have gotten a new camera. Uh, which is the one that I am using over here now. So the camera that is over here used to be the camera that was over there, and the camera that is over here used to be the camera that was over there. So I've, I've just kind of rotated everything clockwise by one to insert this new camera. Um, so this, because this is obviously brand new cam, Oh, I'm not even, this is obviously brand new camera, so it's going to be the best quality. Uh, the other, the other side one over here is a DSLR, so it's fine. And then this one's a really old, like 15 year old camcorder. That's I think only putting out 1080i. So <laughs> this thing is scaling it. Granted this DSLR only does 38 frames per second. And then this mirrorless can do 60. So all of these are just different. And thankfully this thing can scale it. So let me grab this camera uh, so we can look at it from the side camera and then we can use this to look at the switcher. So I need to go there. And you know what, I'm actually just gonna get the head out of the way because it's not doing any, oh I keep, I'm, and I'm going out of order again. Back to the VTuber thing. Uh, you can see obviously I'm moving around it's tracking my head, it's tracking my blinks. Uh, there's bones, in, you know, the, the hair or whatever. Kind, yeah, kind of moving in there. Uh, but I also have a leap motion controller down here so I actually can control my fingers um, on the, the VTuber thing as well. But yeah, jumping all over, let's get the head out of the way. So I don't have, ooh. I turned off power to the LED panels and now they're flickering weirdly, not like they normally do. Something is definitely unhappy right now on that thing, but I guess I'll figure it out some other time. There we go. You, you all didn't see that, but it was having a very rough trip over. And unfortunately, this camera over here must be on manual focus to not have stuff on the screen. And I can demonstrate stuff on the screen. Yeah, the autofocus rectangle is on the HDMI output, which is annoying. I might just deal with it for now, but now, you know what? Let's not. I can even get it back into manual focus. Oh gosh. Live production. Focus, and I wanted to try to get this to lighten up a little bit. Oh, that's as much as I can do that way. Yeah, it puts everything on the HDMI output. Isn't it a lovely camera? That's why I wanted to get a new one. So it's just gonna be relegated to, I don't know. I'll probably use it in this setup, but anyway. This is the one that we want to look at right now. So this is the Canon EOS R8. I just got it about a month or so ago. Uh, I actually also just got some more lenses for it. This is the 24 to 50, which is a decent lens. It's just not good at low light and it's not telephoto. So I have got a 24 to 240 upstairs and a 35 millimeter prime. Uh, 35 is great at low light or at least better at low light and the telephoto is nice to have. Haven't really used them other than testing them, but anyway, nice camera, mirrorless. 
It has an output on it, which is clean. If you look, it's, we're actually getting other stuff on its internal display here. So the HDMI output is good for this. Uh, it's got nice controls. I don't like how mushy some of the buttons feel, especially with the shutter button. I think it's hard to tell when it's half depressed. But yeah, it's a pretty nice little camera. I'm liking it so far. And obviously I've got it plugged into wall power. It uses the same battery as uh, the other camera. So it also uses the same external power adapter. So I just went and got another one of the one I had and I can swap, share the batteries between them. So I have a spare battery on this camera. So that's cool. All right, so this is probably gonna be a little bit jittery because I'm gonna be hand holding it. Um, I do have image stabilization on in the lens, so hopefully that will help some. And let's just give it a try. So this is the ATEM Mini Extreme ISO. It's got eight inputs, it's got two media players, and it's also got a thing called a super source, but we'll get into that. A bunch of these buttons here are for controlling Blackmagic cameras, which are useless to me because I don't have any. You can control where some of the inputs go to like the keyers and what it uses for wipes. So you can control those from here. Otherwise, it's very similar to the other one. This one also has a headphone output, so you can control that from here. But otherwise, it's basically the same thing, just bigger, and it has more features. If we look at what I have in my multi-view, uh, you can see that I'm not standing in front of the webcam for the VTuber avatar right now. So what we can do is on my stream deck, it's on the page for Keyer 4, which is the one I'm using. So I can just press the button and it turns off. But these other buttons move it around and change what input it's using. And next means it would be keyed up to come on with the next transition. Uh, we can also, let me just walk through what I have set up in here. So this is the IP address of the switcher. Good luck doing anything with it. These are the first four inputs for preview and program, which are basically these buttons. I might not really keep these here. Uh, this is just when I was setting it up. Um, Media player, downstream key or control, so I can turn it on and off, which apparently I hadn't had it on. Uh, you can cut between inputs, you know, standard stuff. Uh, I don't remember what I was doing on this page previously with the other one. That's why it just says Macro 4 and Macro 3, because they don't have names on this one, and they don't do anything on this one. So I don't know what I was doing here. I'll hook up the old one and remind myself. This controls the picture-in-picture, picture, which I hadn't been using yet. But if I go to, uh, want it to be camera two, uh, I can hit top right to get it ready. And then if I hit preview, it puts it on preview. That should probably be called next. Or I can just hit PIP key one. Whoops, that takes me, that's not how it's set up here. Or I can hit on air and it just turns it on. And I can move it around. I thought I had the, DS key on, stay on downstream key here. The next page controls the media player one, at least half of the options for it. Right now it's set to my little table flip icon. Uh, the rest of these are blank. You can see that the downstream key here is on and I can also pull it up as just a source. Uh, the next thing is the next 10 sill images and this is media player two. Uh, you can look here, I can go turn media player one, or downstream keyer one off and uh, turn downstream keyer two on. That's the logo of the company I work for. Um, you obviously can switch them around to whatever in here. Uh, this is keyer one, which is doing the picture in picture right now. So I can pick what camera is in here. So I can put the same camera in here, which is kind of silly. Two, three, the computer, the raw VTuber with the green screen effect, six and seven are nothing, or I can get the multi-view in here. Um, and fly to A and fly to B, woo. Fly to A and B apparently are full screen here because that's just the default, so let's put it back where it was. Uh, keyer two and keyer three, I'm not using for anything right now. Keyer four, as previously mentioned, is the VTuber. Uh, Multi-view window, so this is cool. So because this thing has eight inputs and I wanted to have a big preview and big program, 
Uh, you can make the, everything on here smaller so you can see everything. But all I have right now are cameras one, two, three, four, and five, plus a preview, a program, the audio levels, recording, and streaming information. But if you make the other windows smaller, and I just realized that I am picture and picturing with myself. So if I go to DVE1, I can shove camera two into it. So that's using the built-in buttons to do the same thing that I was doing on the stream deck. But anyway, back to the multi-view. Uh, and let's preview three. So the multi-view, right. So yeah, you can get, if you, if you shrink the preview in the program, then you can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, uh, the super source and the media players, and then the audio will be up there. Some, it's something like that if you want to have a tiny preview and program. But I want a big preview and a big program. So I had to hide four inputs, or more than, more than four inputs. No, yeah, four, four total inputs have to be hidden. So the way I'm doing that is this window here with the VTuber is I set up to be controllable from the stream deck. And it's set to VTube right now, but I can hit cam. Can I do this in a way that you can see everything? So if I hit camera six, you'll get nothing. Oop. Camera three, nothing. PC. Oh, wait, I hit the wrong button here. Uh, yeah, there we go. So camera six, camera seven, multi view, loop back. Uh, media player one, media player two, the super source, which is. Basically, you can assemble up to four different sources on the screen and do crazy shit with it. Uh, you can set it to just be black and the two color generators. I've been leaving it on V2 for now just so I can see what's coming in, but it's really handy to be able to see what's in the media players or if I'm actually using multiple inputs here uh, just to have all that in there. And then the next thing here is the auxiliary two output. So this thing also has two outputs in addition to two uh, to eight inputs. And um, one of them is controllable by these buttons here called labeled video out and it's set to multi-view right now and that directly controls what I'm looking at on this screen. So if I hit the different buttons over here you can see that it's changing up there and I normally have that on a multi-view because that's what I want to see but when I'm setting up the cameras I'll pull up the specific cameras just so I can see if they're aimed right and focused etc. So that's cool. The other output doesn't have a way to configure it without using the software. So what I set up here in the stream deck and for oh yeah so I'm using the stream deck with a software called companion which lets you control this and a lot of other software and it's really cool it's free uh, I like it. It's neat. So I have that set up to control the other output, which is currently set to multi-view as well. The second output is plugged into camera eight to get the, the multi-view to be recorded. It's just a little loop back one and a half foot HDMI cable there. I tried using an HDMI splitter, but it just doesn't work with this. I guess it doesn't like the output from this device. But yeah. I don't know. So I can control what input 8 is and to demonstrate that if I go back here to the multi-view window and I hit input 8 to, so we can see it on here, then if I hit camera 1, we're sending camera 1, the handheld camera, out to that other port and all my, I can do the same exact same things that I can do on the, for the other output. It's the exact same, what is that? 12 outputs that I have set up. So that's really cool. Leave it on multi-view and set that back to the VTuber. And then that's really all that I have set up here in the Steam Deck or the Stream Deck. Um, I want to mess around with it a lot more because there's a lot more cool stuff you can do. Like setting setting this picture in picture stuff is just you press a button and it shoots values at the thing and it just stores those values to use them later. Um, Yeah, so you can do that for like all of the configuration settings in here. You can also have it run macros so they're stored in the device itself. And this also has six macro buttons physically on it. So when you figure out what I want to put in there, you can do a hundred total, I think. 
but having the macros stored on the device are probably better, especially for the picture in picture ones. Like I might just record them as macros because these buttons here, like if I use these buttons that are set up for it, look how tiny it makes it. I hate it. It's almost useless. And this one also has additional buttons to get a big side like that. And then a side by side, which is kind of cool, I guess, but I don't know. I like this bigger one a lot better. Um, and then um, I think that's really it. I just wanted to, to nerd out over this device that I got a little bit. Um, I do want to try to get back into working on the head. I just haven't had time. I should have time next weekend. Um, I've been trying to catch up on actually going out and getting some exercise when the weather's been nice which it hasn't been today, but I've just spent five hours, I think, messing with this, maybe even six. It's been a while. Five or six hours just messing with this stuff and getting it all set up and, and geeking out. And I just wanted to, to have a, a short little video to, uh, to go over that. So I'm gonna put you back on there so you're not shaky cam, and then I can turn that off. I don't know what I'm going to do with this old one for sure. Realistically, I'm probably going to um, just re factory reset it, put it back in its box, and try to sell it on eBay. But, uh, next time, definitely we'll get some progress done on working on the Protogen head. Realistically, it's going to be more software because I just need to figure out what I'm, how to do the physical finishing it up on my head uh, portion of it. I realize I can turn this back on, but. Uh, oh, and I can, I got so much cool shit I can do so I can go cam three on. And then, hey, look at that. Oh, reverse angle. Anyway, thanks for dealing with me geeking out. I'm probably gonna trim this down a little bit before pushing it up, low effort, but. Uh, more Protogen head videos will be coming within a month. I can almost guarantee that. I just haven't had the time. But until then, thanks for watching.